Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to BTV. I am Jasenia and I'm with your host, Brian, for this awesome interview. Super excited. Thank you for having me here. That's it, and we're done. <laughs> This young woman is such a superstar, entrepreneur, fitness, uh, musician, entertainer, influencer. What else do you do? So many different things. Oh my God, it's crazy. Um, thank you for that introduction. That's amazing. Um, I mean, I run a podcast with a few other badass women um, yeah. that are also Latinas. Yeah. Um, and I also talk about domestic violence. I'm an ambassador for that because I'm a survivor. So yeah, I mean. So, so many things that we want to talk to you about today, Jasenia, and just all, I actually learned about you months ago when I featured you in a Forbes article about some of the top Instagram influencers that you need to keep an eye out for in 2017, 2018, 2045. And um, then we just reached out and said, yeah, we should actually like should meet right and here. do a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Um, several different questions for you. Uh, you know, we, a lot of people. Just so you know, our audience is basically 18 to 35 year old entrepreneurs. Nice. So you, we we both fit squarely within that. You probably more than me. I'm almost <laughs> on my way out of that category. I don't want to talk about it. Um, but actually. The, so there's a lot around people want to know about content creation, about becoming an influencer, about um, being a powerful Latina. We have a lot of, our, our audience actually, believe it or not, is like 60% Latino, wow. which is awesome because I'm a Latingo. Yeah. You yeah. know that? Latingo? What's a Latingo? A uh, Latingo, thank you for asking, <laughs> is a um, gringo de sangre, Latino de corazón. Oh, I love it. Pero si habla de español, muy bien. Sí, claro que sí. <laughs> so one day we'll do an Ecuador trip. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Lots of exciting stuff. So first of all, tell us a little bit about like your backstory, who you are, where you're from, and what was the moment in time where you decided, listen, I want to wear all these hats mm -hmm. and do them all really well. You know, it's interesting. Um, I went to school uh, for nursing. And, and where did you go to school? At Seton Hall in New Jersey. Jersey. Um, I'm a Jersey born, raised, living, you know, I'm always a New Yorker. Everyone thinks I'm a New Yorker, but I'm a Jersey girl. Um, I got into the industry by accident. I was in my third year um, in nursing school. I was invited to the Tyra Bank talk show. Long story short, I thought I was going to be in the audience, and next thing you know, I'm on center stage with Kim Kardashian and Tyra Banks, and they're announcing me as the winner of Kim's Lookalike Contest. I was literally a deer with headlights. I thought I was going to lose. Did you I enter into this? No, contest? no. The funny thing is, my friend, my friend, that when I was a freshman, she was a senior. She was already her second year executive producer of the show. Okay. So she invited so she me out to the you. show. She knew me. She reached out to me. I yep. guess she thought we had similar features, me and Kim. But she knew that I wouldn't go had she told me there was a contest stage. and I was going to be on TV. Because I was like so shy. If you ever see that footage, I mean, I'm literally a deer in headlights. I'm like, I'm in my head. I'm like, I'm going to lose. This is going to be so embarrassing. I'm not going to be able to show my face. I got to leave New Jersey. Bye. <laughs> but when I won, it opened up a lot of doors that I never even thought of doing, yep. you know, um, which is entertainment, which is becoming an entrepreneur, which is becoming an influencer. So your third year of college at yep. this point or third year of nursing school? My third year of college, my second year of clinicals. So you're 20? Oh no, 20? honey, I talk about my age a lot. I just turned 33 in September. And age for... of Christ. <laughs> it's going to be a good year. That is exactly what I've been hearing and reading. Um, I think up until this point, I've dealt with a lot of things in my personal life. Yep. Professionally, my career has always been blooming, which is amazing. I have to thank my audience who support me, who know my story, and are diehard you know, supporters. You rock. Um, but it opened up a lot of stuff. I traveled the world. I was on billboards. I was in commercials. I was doing TV. And here's this girl growing up, you know, a tomboy, overweight. I was 230 pounds. But the one thing I always had was my personality and my, my brain. Yep. I always, you know, fed my brain with books and literature. So to me, it was it was just kind of like an oxymoron for this industry to have. They're like, well, here's this badass Latina, but she's funny and she's smart. Yep. So how do we optimize that? So Telemundo had a show called Mundos. Yeah. And I um, co-hosted and they wanted to produce a show that I was in the process of creating. However, I fell in love with the wrong guy. Okay. And uh, once I moved in with him is where the claws came out. Long story short, I had a million followers at that time. Within a year, I had a million followers wow. because I was everywhere. I was on million Twitter. followers on what platform? On YouTube subscribers. On Facebook, I had 1.2 million. On Twitter, I had uh, close to a million. And he deleted all of my, my accounts. 
and it's it's sad. Without you knowing. Uh, I, I only knew after the breakup because I didn't know he had access to all of my passwords. Oh, so you knew that they were deleted, you just didn't know who deleted them. I figured it was him, and then yes, it was. And, um, you know, it, this was really sad because it was after the breakup, it was after a lot of trauma. I mean, to be physically abused by yeah. someone who claims to love you. It's a difficult place to be because I've never had a man put their hands on me, period. So for someone that claims to be, you know, your your rock, your supporter, your the, the love of your life, yeah. to do that, it was difficult. But as 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 resilient as I was, I said this was not going to define me. Mm -hmm. I did not want it to define me. I said there's more to me than just feeling sorry for myself. Now I'm I'm upset at myself because I stayed. I'm upset at myself because I I, I once there were no red flags. It was obvious at one point I should have done something, but you know what? At the end of the day, it is the cycle of abuse. You don't fall in love with a monster. You fall in love with this Prince Charmer. And um, I always tell um, the young ladies that I speak with that to always seek help, even break the silence. It's, that's probably the most important thing to do. And I actually was away from the industry for about two, three years. What um, were you doing during those two or three years? I was really finding myself, rebuilding my strength. Um, to start from zero, it was kind of like, do I want to do this? Because Again. it's totally different. Yeah, the industry has changed. Everyone's how did, how famous. Had the, how had the industry changed in those two or three years? The industry had changed because Instagram became really big. Yeah. And you know, I had I didn't have an account there, so it was kind of like, okay, looking at all these Insta famous people, um, you realize that all these proclaimed models and actors and well, what have you been in? Yeah. You know, like I have a resume, right. you know, for me to say I was a model, I modeled both clothing and I was also in magazines and I was on, you know, that's why I'm a model, not because I'm on Instagram Same tagging. Model. Yes. Right. And you know, in regards to acting, I'm like, I'm an actress, I'm on IMBD and I'm sad. So like, what have you done? So it was a scary time, but I said, you know what, if my following remembers me, even if that, a fraction, it's enough to feed me to continue to go hard. And once I created my Instagram account, Instagram got a hold of me and was like, listen, you know, we want to verify your account. We heard what happened to you in the past with X, Y, and Z, and we don't want that to ever happen again. So they heard that yeah. you had your accounts deleted? Yeah, yeah. So that's how did they? How did they hear that? I guess, you know, I, I, I'm really loved and respected by a lot of big name people in the industry. So it's always kind of like, hey, did you hear from such and such? Because I went and said this. Yeah. So I'm sure one of my good, good friends, um, must have reached out to them and told them my story and um, that's why I have verification on both Facebook and Instagram because they're both affiliated with one another um, but mm -hmm. to start from zero I had to kind of rebrand myself I took that opportunity to rebrand myself I was like okay so I was compare like Kim Kardashian's look-alike but I'm not just that I'm right. more than that and that's why you see my content Content's very important and the one thing I tell people is just be true to you yeah you know don't don't live up to something that you can never obtain there's a way to get to that goal, but be real. People can see the BS. People can appreciate and respect and love the honesty. You know, some people will hate you for that, but some people will actually look up to you and you're, and you're using your platform with a positive message versus living in a facade. And when you're true to yourself, the universe will reciprocate back. And I think that the reason why I've been successful in the last, you know, two and a half years is because I've been true to myself. You know, and what so starting from scratch, I mean, this is a very interesting thing. And then there's a couple of questions that came in that I want to interject into this conversation right now because we're at a relevant point The the first question will be, how did you what were the first three things that you did to rebuild from zero to now over 200,000 followers, which, you know, we thought was amazing because they're very engaged, but like we didn't even know about the whole thing before. <laughs> But so the, that's the, the first question is like starting from scratch, whether it's to build a big Instagram following or just start from scratch in general. Mm -hmm. Second thing, the, the question that we received after sharing that you'd be on the show was what was the final point where you were like enough with this relationship? Okay, so enough with that relationship. It was me landing in the hospital and everyone finding out my family, my friends, everyone getting involved. So luckily they were like no more. They were like there's no reason for you to ever go back. Like, your, th our doors are open. And that, that was it? That was it. And you yeah. never went back? No, never looked back. Never looked back. I mean, of course, the, 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 the law enforcement was involved um, because they saw everything. Um, if they had not been there, I probably don't know what my 
physical state would be, if I'd even be here. Um, he was choking me while I was driving a vehicle and I diverted off onto a person's lawn and in order to get out, I literally just jumped off of, out of that moving vehicle and the police saw everything, they arrested him, they came to my aid, I, I literally passed out and next thing you know everyone's like in the in, in, involved, everyone's involved and everyone's like oh my god, why didn't you tell us? Part of it was humiliation, part of it was, uh, you know, how am I so smart and in such a really not so smart situation, like how? Like you, you really, 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 really start to uh, just belittle yourself even more because that's what the abuser does, yeah. you know? So that's when it was over. Yeah. When I decided to branch onto the industry again, I realized that helping people has always been my passion, which is why I got into the nursing field, which fun fact, I've been doing for 13 years and it wasn't until this summer that I realized, you know what, I can't really do all this at the same time. So, so you just, were doing full-time nursing yeah. during all this as well? Yeah. And so I, oh, wow. I literally like, re like, like resigned and put my hand, my hand up, like I, I hanged up my hat and was like, all right, I love you guys for all this. Thank you for supporting me. And they were so happy. They were like, listen, we knew this day was going to come. We can't believe you made this last as long as you made it last. But I was like, well, there was bumps in the roads. So I had to start all over again. And how long ago was this that you said? This was three months ago. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Fantastic. you. So I've been traveling a lot. I've been yeah. working a lot. I've been, you know, very blessed. And I'm humbled with every single project that I get that gets bigger and bigger because it, it expands to being able to deliver my message just to help people. Going through your stuff for the last couple of days as we were prepping this and just like you're everywhere. You're you know, you're on 50 Cent's channel, you're on like, you have your own thing, you do fitness, you do entrepreneurship, you do like a boss, you do like mentality, mindset, there's a motivational side to you. How do you make sense of it as a brand? You know, a lot of people like have a lot of things that they're doing all at the same time and they, they really have a hard time figuring out how do I make all this work? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of a perfect example of like someone that seems to be kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. How do you make it work? I make it work like I said, if I'm going to do something, I'm true to it, right? It's, it, it's what is the definition of me. Being overweight, overcoming childhood obesity and a lot of medical issues, um, we all have the same 24 hours of the day. We all have um, no reasons to create excuses. If I was able to do that at a young age with that mentality, then why can't I do that now? I've been blessed to be able to work with Generation Iron, which you've probably seen them on Amazon and in, in theaters because this summer it, it did hit in selective theaters throughout the States and over in the UK, which was my first time ever going to the UK with so them. So tell me what Generation yeah. Iron is for those that don't know. Generation Iron is a network that caters to fitness, health, and wellness. Um, me and them work Work on a segment called this or that where we compare this or that it could be between your favorite uh, personal trainer your favorite athlete your favorite bodybuilder or even are six meals better than three meals so we are very innovative and very informative and our audience gets gets to pick which they prefer mm -hmm. this or that and at mm -hmm. the very end um, they get to pick and then the, the next segment we announce which one was more popular, which one got the most popular vote. And that's Generation Iron. Um, with This Is 50, I have Like A Boss. Um, like A Boss, I decided to do because working with Univision, I was able to create something called Girl Talk, right? But I didn't want it to just narrow it down to just females. And I didn't want to narrow it down to just Latinas. I wanted to do something with people that have like a boss minded mentalities, yep. which is why I've been able to interview a plethora of talent here in New York and whenever I travel, and that's awesome. In regards to the comedy that you see, um, because I've been in films that are very dark and serious and like I'm usually like killing someone or something, <laughs> I wanted to show who I really am. I'm <laughs> I don't know why they always have me like an assassin or something. I'm like always in black and I'm like shooting a gun. Like why am I killing people? But in real life, You're like- very scary. <laughs> You're very scary person. That's why I didn't want to wear black today. Um, in, in real life, I was like, I am just a goofball. I, I like to crack jokes, yeah. which is something I'm working on right now. I'm working on my first stand-up comedy show. Cool. Right? It's, already, it's already written. It's gonna be a 45 minute show and- um, What's the opening we're line? Gonna Motherfucker. Ooh. Can I say that? Um, and the reason why it's a play <coughs> it's a play with situations. You know that when like you are having a bad day or somebody like cuts you off or someone you know ticks you off, that motherfucker, right? Well, I talk about my relationships, those motherfuckers. <laughs> I talk about the, the, the struggle with the, the weight and the obesity and the people that teased me and now want to be my friends on Facebook. Like 
motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. I got you. You know, so it's, it's you. funny. Um, but I, 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 people that have inspired me are John Leguizamo. Um, yeah. Not because he's Latino, but yeah. what he was able to do. Yeah. Here's an actor, a Broadway actor, that brought it into, into comedy, into yeah. stand-up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Amy Schumer's dope. But, you know, like, it took her to do stand-up to, to be on the big screen. Yeah. So my perspective was like, I'm already on television, I'm already on this, let me do a side project, and this is gonna be my project for 2018, I'm super excited to share it here for the first time. That's, this is the first time you're announcing <laughs> yes. it? Yes. <laughs> Guys, you heard it first on BTV, October, what is the day? Fourth? Third? Today's the third. Second? <laughs> October. 10-3-2-17, 2017, 2017. <laughs> Listen, when you are selling out Madison Square Garden, please remember the little people. You guys will be there. You guys will be there sitting front. I don't care about center. them. I want to be there. <laughs> so, all right, cool. This is amazing. So then, so now the stand up and the shows and so, you know, another question that came in is, well, we we re we recognize and tell me this is still true. You don't have an agent. I don't have an agent. Your I agent do this free. all on my own. You just on your own. So yeah. we get oh, we get a lot of questions in like how, how? like how did you get on to. The 50 Cent channel. How did you do Univision? How did you? How are you doing all these? Things? Networking. Um. Well, like I said, I was blessed to have been discovered off national television on a big network like Tyra Banks talk yeah. show. Um. And people don't forget that. Yeah. People remember resumes. And even though now people care about how many likes do they get, how many followers do they have, if your resume is strong, which you still have an EP, which I still have. If you have reels, which I have. Um. You know. But it's a lot of it word of mouth. Yeah. It's like, oh, like for example, I'm working with Al Rucker right yeah. now in their production company. How did that happen? That happened because I was on set filming a comedy sketch. The videographer on set happens to be a, 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 a part of a production team of Al's and was like, this girl's got a lot of talent. Reached out to me when it was time to have a meeting and yep. was like, we want to do this with you. Yep. And we want you and two other girls and X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, what you're telling me right now, what you're describing to me right now is what I'm doing right now with the podcast with two other girls. Yep. Rather than cast two other girls, let's bring the ones I've been rocking with. And I'm a team player, you know, and I believe in positive karma and putting good into the world. And, you know, I was able to bring them along with me on this journey. Um, you know, to be able to work under a man that's as brilliant as him yeah. and, and to be recognized, it's, it's hum like I said, it's humbling. It's not flattering, it's humbling because you work so hard and it makes sense to me. Like everything for me makes sense. You know, this is, if, if I'm not an expert in what I'm talking about, like fitness, then I'm not gonna talk about it. Mm. Fun fact, I took myself to school, I have a degree, I can be a personal trainer and I'm certified. Like I have all of that. I'm nursing, you know, psychology, like I have all these yeah. things. Um, even I was bored one day and I was like, I love to learn. I'm a Virgo. So maybe that answers your question. Cause look at it Beyonce, look at Beyonce. She was born the fourth, I was born the fifth because God was like, no, we can't have two divas on one day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Nick loves Beyonce. Yeah, I love, I love her too. Beyonce, I love you, I love you. Um, but there are so many hats that we tend to wear, but in the process, it's not about us like as a person it's about the, the whole of, of the community that yeah. we serve and you know this the world wide web take advantage of it yeah. people all over the world are watching yeah. and i get people from all over the world sure. men and women children you know hitting me up and saying you inspire me with your story whether it was because of the domestic violence or the obesity or just because what i'm doing period as an entrepreneur yeah. so that to me it's, it's it's nice because we don't have that a lot anymore because everybody's just being ratchet and just being extra. And that's not really them. I've met a lot of these people that yeah. are super popular on yeah. social media and gone viral, but they're nowhere close to that in real life. It's just a persona. But then they wonder why they can't make money off of it. Interesting. So <laughs> making money off of it, it's a nice segue. How would someone, um, and you know, share as much of your experience as you want, but how would someone that is in a position similar to yours, mm -hmm. wants to be in the entertainment world, wants to be doing all these things, wants to be a content creator, wants to influence culture in a different number of different ways. How do people get paid doing that? Well, a lot of the times, like for example, I work at This Is 50 in Generation Iron and I get, I get a check every month. You know, I'm an employee. Um, when it comes to being an independent talent, um, you can work with companies that will reach out to you. 
I've actually been reached out to by a lot of brands, and if I don't believe in it, yeah. I'll try it. But you think that's because of Instagram? It's Instagram. That's yeah. definitely because of Instagram. A lot of a lot of brands will hit me up, and they're like, "Hey, we have this," and I'm like, "Oh, send it to me. Let me try it." And they're at first they're a little confused, like, "We want to pay you to post this up. Why do you want to try it?" I'm like, "I want to try it because if it's legit, because I will then it. I will push it. If yeah. I don't like it, there was you know those bras that you see all the girls wearing." Well, I got offered a really big check for that, and I was like, well, send it to me first. Let me try it. Did it fit I right? tried it. No, it fit right. It fit so right that when I pulled it off, it pulled my skin off. And I bled, and I had like a weird scab. You're like, I'm not summer. promoting this. And I was like, I'm not promoting this. Yeah. And you'll never see me wear that or promote that because in real life, I will never wear that after that happens yeah. to me. Like, are you kidding me? I wouldn't want somebody to use my code or be like, I'm getting it because I saw Jasenia get it, and all of a sudden they're like they're bleeding. bleeding off of their boob. <laughs> like, that's not cute. So I totally didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> so that's it's a perfect cute. example, but there are, you know, if you're true to yourself, I believe that here's the thing, we're all in the same race. Slow and steady gets you there. At yeah. the end of the day, it doesn't matter how fast you get there, you're gonna get there and you have to be like, you ever seen that image of those two men just like picking away, picking away, picking away, and one's like this much further away from, from, from hitting the, the diamonds and he's still going and the other one's literally like a hair he away, he stops. So here's the thing, don't stop. Don't get too hard on yourself. Don't try to be anybody else but you. If people like you, people are gonna like you. If people don't like you, they're not gonna like you. They're not gonna follow you, but the people that do like you will follow you and it will continue. And it's just like planting you know, a seed. You can't just be like, hey, grow. You know, you have to put in work, you have to be patient, you have to put in time. And that's exactly- How long have you been doing this? Um, this I, loosely, all of well, this. Well, getting back to this and getting to the 200 plus K No, no, mark, but even before that, when you were doing <clears throat> I TV got in, shows, when you were doing... I got into the TV in 2010. I stepped away in 2012. I was gone the 13th, the 14th, and got back... Uh, in the, well, I was gone the 13th, 14th, 14th. 15th, and got back on the 16th, so you're, 17th. You're, so I was, you're just I, fresh into it. I'm again. fresh into it again. Um, it'll be like three years in like the new year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, like I said, being away, you know, was about me and um, finishing a few things like school um, yeah. and then rebuilding. I mean, I literally lost money as well. Like, yeah. The money that I had saved away, which was close to $12,000, gone. Had to move out, all these other things, and it was scary. But like I said, we all have the same 24 hours of the day to make our dreams happen. Whether it's to lose 25 pounds, whether it's to get the dream job that we want, or whether it's to live this entrepreneurial life. And the funny thing is, like, I'm in the middle of entrepreneurial, but also a professional. Yeah. You know, um, like I said, I get, I, I have a contract yep. with these companies to yep. be a host, to be talents. But then I have my side stuff. Well, Why it's not like a hybrid. Yeah, 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 totally. It's a hybrid. I mean, it's. I think it's a really smart model, especially if you are unsure about what that like. You've just basically tasted a hundred different things over the last seven years, and three or four or five or seven of them have stuck. Mm -hmm. And then, th and then you'll taste those three, four, five, seven, and then one or two more, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. it's just like a snowball thing. And I think that something that you're saying that's really smart, and I personally have done a lot of this as well with just writing for different publications, is use value, right, as Leverage. the networking. Yep. Yep. Like just straight like value. I mean, I've written a hundred or 150 articles about people that I've asked nothing of. And if I ever need anything, I can go back to them. I don't do it for that. Mm -hmm. I don't write articles for the leverage, but I think that it's like, and even visit, like we have, I have so many business meetings that will do me zero good mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. But I know in 10 years from now, like I believe in the person mm -hmm. and I know that it's going to be, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I think that, so what you're saying is really, really smart, which is, Use established distribution channels, right? 50 mm -hmm. cents thing, mm -hmm. Tyra Banks thing. Like they've already done the work to and build their follow. network. But the, the thing that I think is really important as well that, that you have like implicitly said, which is you actually have to be talented. Like yes. if you were not talented, no matter what happened on Tyra Banks' show, it w I wouldn't that be would be the end of it. The talent has to be there plus the persistence, yeah. plus using distribution channels. What's your big goal? What is your long-term vision? What, My what big goal want? is um, to be a household name. I've been saying it for like the last two you years. You want to be an iconic. Um, 
I want to be alongside these people that I admire and aspire um, to be like um, because that's what they've done for me and I want to do that as yeah. well. I grew up loving Selena and when she passed away yeah. because of that was really tragic but I said you know everything I've done in some weird way I'd be like would Selena do this? What would Selena do now? Yeah. You know because she she was an, a perfect example of someone that used her platform right and did everything. One day she said, I want to design clothes, and she opened up a boutique. One day she said, I want to act, and she got into acting. One day she said, let me do this kind of music versus this kind of music, which is funny because now I'm doing music. Yeah. You know, and, and, um. You want to sing a little for us? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do something, something. We'll but do a little to, something, something. To me. We'll wrap up with <laughs> To me, it's, 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 it's interesting because a lot of, a lot of people that have followed her know that about her. Like, she did everything under the sun. Yeah. And how? Because she had one strong platform. Yeah. Right now, you know, we live in such a generation, this millennial, where you can use, it's free. It's You can use your phone, yeah. you can just <laughs> set it up, and one, two, three, you can have a team of just doing stuff. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to network, connect, make things make sense, and make the circle, you know, connect and get bigger. Yeah. Nope. So what's the next, let's say next 36 months for you, what does it look like? How do you become a household name? Okay, so fun, fun fact, I'm going to be working with a, a Grammy Award winning writer and producer. We are working on some music. It requires me to be away for a month in the West Coast, which is tough because I'm going to miss my Pikachu, my niece, and my nephews. Um, She's but, coming back, don't worry. But these are the things you have to do. Yeah, these are the things you have to sacrifice. And this industry is a lonely industry. Yeah. It is. People are probably like, oh my God, she's got so many friends. I have very few good friends in this industry yeah. that, that, that would really like, they're my, they're my ride or die. Um, but a lot of people will, they're snakes. They like to take opportunities sure. and, and very, you know, very cutthroat. But you have to understand that this comes with this territory. It's a little different. Even as an entrepreneur, yeah. I'm sure you understand that not everything that you do and that you're invested in is going to come to life, but maybe it will five six, ten years down the road, totally. you can use that. It's never a waste. Don't think negatively. I'm always about, like, put positive into the world. And what makes me so sad is the, the things that are happening now in the world, you know, like gun control. A friend of mine, who you've probably seen me in recent comedy sketches with, this amazingly talented Pakistani kid, born and raised in the States, um, happened to be in What's Vegas. His name? Um, his name is Roman. And he happened to be in Vegas. Um, he texted me at 11 p.m. and was like, hey, Jasenia, thank you again for you know being so hospitable when he was out here in New York. He's like, I just touched down to Vegas. I'm super excited. It's my first time. I'm like, have a blast. You're going to enjoy it. And then a few hours later, I'm waking up to start my day. Of course, there's a uh, difference in time zone. And I'm looking at the news. And I'm like, oh. He, I know he was just there because he told me he was going to be at, around that facility. So I'm calling him up. And luckily, we got a hold of each other on the phone, he's safe, he's fine, but I said this to him, because he's young, and he asked me the same question you did, how do you, you know, put this all together, and I said, listen, you have a really strong platform right now, what, close to 15,000 followers, you're doing these comedy sketches to get people's eyes and ears, right, but now let's give them something to talk about that matters, you just survived something, you're alive for a reason, you told me literally that you were just walking away from there when it all happened, you know, yeah. walking into the other hotel, and you were locked in, Let's talk about that. Let's yeah. talk about hate crimes. Let's talk about the, the, the domestic terrorism that exists because it, this happened at home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what that's why I use my platform. I'm like, let's talk about something I survived. I survived this, so I'm going to use that and be the voice for that. And that's what I feel like a lot of influencers should be doing because it's, it's not about making all this money and being popularity because at the end, that's not your legacy. No one's going to care. I could easily get a million followers again. Yeah. How? By wearing bathing suits all the time and being super provocative and just, you know, twerking and shaking. But will those millions of followers care what I'm talking about? No. That's important. Like, yeah. I, I love that. And so, what are some... So let me do a few rapid-fire questions for you. If you, were, if you were to write a book or write a movie about your life, what would it be called? Something to talk about. Something to talk about. Uh, that would be the book. Actually, that's actually the name of the book that I'm working on. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I actually started writing it four years ago, and I stopped because a lot of things started, you know, with finals and the blah, 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 and then getting back into this industry. But I'm halfway done. Cool. Yeah. Something to talk Something about. Something to talk about. All right. Coming out 2018 or what? I don't know about 2018. 2019? Maybe 2019. 2020? Maybe 2020. 2020. That sounds cool. Something yeah. To, hey, 2020. Something to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Something to talk about in 2020. 
Just, so. just throwing it up. I had to think about it because I know I had like three titles, but that was the one I decided. Something to talk about. All right, if you, if people, you're, you're dead. You're dead. You're gone. That's it. You're, you're over. If you heard somebody say one sentence about you and that you would think to yourself, that's the nicest thing anyone could say about me, what would that sentence be? Justenia was very giving to others. It's so true. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Because um, I hear it all the time. So I know that they would say that. Your favorite this or that? Ever. My favorite this or that was the episode on, um, am I going to murder his name again? Um, Column and some other weird Japanese bodybuilder. And the reason why it was my favorite was because both their names screwed me up. Usually, like, I'll fin film a segment in like 20, 30 minutes, and because of them, it took me an hour. So that was why. Yes. <laughs> you guys are both the worst. Just throwing it out there. If you're watching, the worst. It was Hama Hama Shaki and the other one. I can't. Those were, the, those were my favorite because I was cracking up with my boys that filmed this. Um, I call them like my geek squad. We were just dying. We're like, should we order pizza? Should we? I was like, yes, let's do that because I am my brain. <laughs> favorite person in the whole world? Favorite person in the whole My Pikachu, my niece. Aww. I love her to death. And it's sad because, like, you know, you don't ever want to pick somebody. I love I all know. of my family members, but of because course. she's the baby, I'm like, yes, I'm a Pikachu, little baby. Pikachu, we love you. <laughs> um, most inspiring thing that's ever happened to you in your life? The most inspiring thing that has ever happened to me in life was speaking for the first time um, amongst women in front of the uh, women from the UN. Um, I got in, and because of that, I got invited to attend their recent fashion show, which was for charity. Cool. Yeah, so that was really amazing for me because I was like, whoa, who would have thought the girl that was on the Tyra Banks show proclaimed as Kim's lookalike is doing this? Like, Kim hasn't even done this. Yeah. You know? You're amazing. <laughs> have you ever met Kim Kardashian? I met Kim that day. Oh, that's She's it. She's the one that crowned me. She crowned she you. She blogged about me, and it, that's why it was like super, it was like wildfire. Really? Happened all overnight. Yeah, that was a fun time. Um, the most important thing anyone has ever said to you? Well, my mom recently told me um, because I <laughs> just recently got out of a, another breakup. Okay. But no, he was not abusive. But he turned to steroids and it messed up this whole relationship. And I lost him because of that. It's like one day getting up a phone call and saying, hey, such and such has got into a car accident and he's dead. And that's how this breakup happened. Oh, he, like, he oh, got your... No, he's not dead, but oh. it's like overnight. Like, who are you? Left, took the ring, showed me the ring, which I didn't even know was there. So one thing that was said to me recently that totally like moved me and gave me more fuel was what my mom said to me. She goes, mija, you know, I know all these years I've been on your back about, you know, yeah, I want you to get, get married, married, I want yeah. you to have kids. She's like, I've seen the last two relationships. You give, 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 give. And you're an amazing daughter, I'm proud of you. But I've decided that, you know what? If you don't ever, just be happy. Nice. Live for you and be happy. And if it happens, the moment happens, then whatever. But I just want you to be happy. Yeah. Forget that pressure, like, you know? And it meant a lot to me because as an old traditional Latin woman, such That's as my hard mother, thing to say. it was hard, you know, for yeah. her to say it on her own, yeah. I was just like, wow, that just took off a whole load off my back. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so now I'm married to my career. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's why I, I resigned and I said this has got to be full throttle now. You're, you're going to be in it full time. So are you planning on staying on the East Coast? I'm Right now I've been traveling by coastly. Um, Between here and Los Angeles or? Yes. Okay. Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I've been, yeah, I've been to Los Angeles three times in the last three months and twice to Vegas in the last. Do you do anything in Latin America? I want to go to Latin America, and that's the thing. Because like, you're Ecuadorian. I'm Ecuadorian. As we discussed I, before the cameras yes. were rolling. Uh, yeah, I'm Ecuadoriana. I always represent everyone. I guess everyone sees this and they think Colombian. <laughs> but I'm Ecuadorian. We're neighbors. We have the same colors of the flag. Yes, yeah, that's true. I would love to go to the, and do something there. Um, if anyone that knows anything out there on how we can do it, do it. Because, you know, I'm always giving here in New York, New Jersey, and I would love to do something there. Um, so, I'm in gonna, Ecuador or in Latin America anywhere? In well, the music. It's funny because the music that we're doing is a lot like what you're hearing now. What kind of music do you do? A lot of music that I'm doing right now and that I'm working on is. See, I'm like more of a pop vocalist, um, but a lot of the stuff that you're hearing with the Latin music, it's interesting because. And I love Beyonce. And Beyonce, if you ever see this, don't hate me for what I'm gonna say. Nick loves Beyonce. But too. sometimes. You, you have to, like, your team needs to tell you, no, honey, don't do this. Um, <laughs> like, Jay, she did, she did, she jumped on the J Balvin record. Yeah. And I was so excited when they were like, Beyonce's on it. I'm like, oh. and then I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. 
What song did she sing with him? Um, it's the record Mi Gente. Yeah. And you and she's saying like a like a rap verse in Spanish, but it sounds horrible. The Spanish is not on point. It's not on point. It's not fluid. It's not even on cue. I'm like. Does it make sense? And I was like, I don't even know what she's saying. Now. <laughs> so I was like, Beyonce, I love you, and I'm sorry. They should have just told you, no, no, don't do it. But um, but my music is it's 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 transcending. The Latin American culture that you have, yep. in, in especially in, in South America, where you know the beats of the drums yeah. and the, the the whole. You ever seen the the that, what's it called? The, 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 the flautas. The, 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 yeah, the, yes. I, a lot of that, um, because I want it to be earthy and and, and cultural and true the to me. The xylophone. Z that's what I'm. Yep, the xylophone. xylophone. Oh, yeah. this one X. Yeah. Um, so I want to do that because that's true to me, my culture, my upbringing. But I was also being a Jersey girl. I heard Bon Jovi, yeah. you know, Lisa Lisa, George Lamont, freestyle, Red Man, Method Man, hip hop, you know. So it's gonna be a nice marriage, just like all of these things that I'm doing. My music's gonna be a little bit of different things that I can do because because I can do pop, I can do a little bit of what all these other people are yeah, doing. Yeah. You know, Shakira is a pop, but she also sure. can do a ballad. She could also do this, she could also do that, so. Do you know I was in a music video once? No, I didn't know that. I was in the very first Bollywood bachata music video. Really? Who was the artist? <clears throat> I don't even remember. It was in San Francisco <laughs> many years ago. It was freezing cold. We were on a beach and I was dancing bachata on the top of a rock. I would love to be in your music video. Okay. And I know I do a lot in Latin America. I spend six months a year in Latin America. That's insane. So we'll figure out I'm something so fun jealous. to do. We'll, we'll I figure, want to go and do that. I've we'll only visited and I've never, you know, I want to do something out there. Um, anything else that you'd like to share with those watching about anything on your mind? Well, right now, um, I'm, I'm going to link up with my girls from Sincerely Podcast. And that came to birth because I, like I said, be true to you. When me and, and Ali were coming together, we're the co-creators of, of this project, I said, I want something that's gonna be raw, honest, and true. And I want it to be in a letter format, like we're writing to the universe. Mm, and she cool. was like, that's awesome. And I was like, well, in every letter, you close it off with sincerely. Yeah. Or all the other things, but I was like, I like sincerely. And she goes, I love sincerely. And we made that happen, so it's sincerely. So the one thing I really wanna leave everybody watching is, Put good into the world. The universe is always listening and watching and it will reciprocate back. Be real, be humble, and be hungry at the same time. And just be sincere. Do you want to sing something? Little No, I was gonna do the I was gonna do, do it. Shakira. Do it. Do something of your own. Do something from your new album. <laughs> well I'm working that's where I'm going to LA to work on something right now. The just stuff get that something? I have the stuff that I have right now is so old, but I can't even talk about that because long story short, people get greedy in the industry and that's what I had to learn um, about cutthroat <laughs> industries. Yeah, so I don't want to even give them any All light right. for that record. Nothing. But I was gonna do Shakira. Do whatever you I want. I don't know. Little 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 at your feet. I'm at your feet. Whenever, whenever we're meant to be together, I'll be there and you'll be near. And that's my the deal, my dear. You're over. <laughs> I do a mouth trumpet, that's it. That was pretty cool, that was pretty cool. I wasn't prepared, but hey. Guys, <laughs> this woman is a rock star in every single sense of the word. Word, world, word, world. Please follow her, please give her love. Please bring her to Latin America. Please share her story. Please bring her to your event. Please just positivity. Thank you for coming on the show. Remember, it's your hour, it's your life, it's your dream to get it, because if you don't, no one else will, and we mean that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sincerely.